So today's podcast, I'm going over some things I wish I would have done different in my 20s. And I've come up with the top list that I believe many people can start implementing today. Honestly, regardless of whether you're in your 20s or not, I think these are great principles that are going to completely change your life and how you think. So let's jump into them. Are you looking to grow your real estate investing business? My company, Future Flipper, can help. We've taught hundreds of people all over the country how to flip, wholesale, and buy rental properties. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your investing journey. Whether you're trying to get your first deal or scale your company, Future Flipper can help. We have courses, coaching, and events for all levels of investors. So if you want to take the next step, go to futureflipper.com and book a free consultation to see how we can best help you. Once again, that's futureflipper.com. If you've ever wanted to invest with me on my real estate deals, it's now possible. At Pineda Capital, we're purchasing value-add real estate all across the country. This includes multifamily, commercial, and land development. The best part is, with my network, social media presence, and marketing strategies, we're able to get the very best deals that others don't have access to. You can join in with me on those deals if you're an accredited investor. If you want to learn more, head over to PinedaCapital.com to see our current opportunities. Once again, that's PinedaCapital.com. Welcome to The Ryan Pineda Show, where our mission is to invest. I only expect to make money in things that I understand. Innovate. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And inspire. I am much more likely to hit my goal just due to putting it out there. Now rocking with the best. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Ryan Pineda Show. Today, I am solo, but I am talking about a very important subject that I think many people who subscribe to my channel or follow me uh, can really relate to, and that is, what are some things I wish I would have done in my 20s? Um, and the reason I say a lot of people could probably relate to that is, you know, looking at the demographics of my channel and, you know, my following, a lot of people are in their 20s. And whenever I go to these events, I get a ton of 20-somethings just asking me for advice or for things that I did different. So typically, most of these podcasts I make that are solo are based on the questions I get. So um, if you ever want me to make a podcast about a question you have, uh, definitely just ask me it. Send me a DM or you know comment below on this video if you're watching on YouTube and let me know what you think. So um, yeah, I, I just want to talk about that today uh, because let me tell you, in my 20s, you know, it's not like I was doing stupid stuff that a lot of 20 year olds do. Um, you know, I, I definitely had fun. I hung out with friends. We went to clubs. I gambled. Um, you know, I, I did that stuff, but it wasn't like it was like every night, like many other people. You know, I, I had my fun when I was 21, 22, but um, the majority of my 20s, I still was really disciplined. I still worked really hard. And for the most part, um, I was doing really good things. You know, I was playing baseball. Uh, I was learning to become an entrepreneur. You know, I started the couch flipping. Uh, eventually in my mid twenties, I got into real estate. And then by the time I was in my late twenties, I had started to learn to build businesses and hire employees. And now here in my early thirties, um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm on this new path of building big businesses and building a social media following and influence and all this stuff. Um, but what I'll tell you is, during my 20s, there are so many things that I didn't do that I do now. And, uh, you know, now I, these are things that I'm going to tell you that I practice, you know, on a daily basis and I apply to my life. Um, and I just wasn't really doing them back then in my 20s. So I think it's going to bring a lot of value to those of you who are young. But also, too, I mean, even if you're like me and you're in your 30s or you're older, you could still apply these things because odds are you probably don't even do them. So um, really, the title at the end of the day is more clickbait than anything since uh, a lot of my audience is younger. But uh, anyways, let's jump into the list. But before we do that, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, whether you're on YouTube or Apple Podcast. Uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review. I'd really appreciate it. Helps uh, this podcast get out to more people. And, uh, you know, just uh, I'd appreciate it. So please do that. Now, let's jump into it. I'm going to give you my quick list and kind of elaborate on each of them, and some of you guys can relate. So number one, the first thing, and this is not in any particular order, by the way, guys. This is just a list I came up with. But number one, um, 
one thing I wish I would have did in my 20s earlier is got a mentor. Um, it's funny because when I was in baseball, you're always looking for coaching. <laughs> I hired hitting coaches. I hired pitching coaches when I was a pitcher. You know, I've hired any and every coach you can imagine, weight training, nutritionist, all these specialists to help me get to the best spot possible in my baseball career. But the thing was, as I got into business and other things, I did not take that same principle. Like I just was like, oh, I'll figure it out. Oh, I don't want to pay for a coach. What do I need a coach for? I can learn it all for free. And uh, that was really stupid on my part. And I, I see people do that today. Whenever I see them in the comments say, oh, you can learn for free. You know, everything's on YouTube. I'm like, you are literally so stupid. You don't even realize how dumb you are. Um, because it's true. Like, it, you can learn the basics of anything on YouTube, but that's it. You're learning the basics. When you have an issue or a problem, YouTube ain't there to just tell you the answer. YouTube has not been through whatever it is uh, you're going through. Um, and also trying to find the information on YouTube is very difficult. Um, you, you're going to spend hours and hours hunting for information you may or may not find. And if you do find the information, you still don't even know if it's right because anybody can make a video on YouTube regardless of if they're real or not. Um, I see that in the finance space a lot. I see people talking about concepts that they don't actually do. They're just concepts. So my advice is anything you're trying to do, go get a mentor who's actually had success at it. Um, or success in training other people at it. And so what I mean by that is like, for instance, real estate, you know, if you want to learn to flip houses, you should hire me. You, I mean, you'd want somebody that flips houses actively and who's done it at a high level, right? So there's that. But if you want to learn how to be a good artist or you want to learn how to write a book, you want to learn how to um, code or make a YouTube channel, Literally, go find somebody who's done that and try to get them to be your mentor. Now, I've done other videos about how to get a mentor. Um, you can go to my YouTube channel and just go search for it, search mentor. And I mean, there are multiple ways to get one. You can pay them. You can add value to them by working for them for free or something. You could, in my case, you know, bring me a deal or something that makes me money, even though you're not bringing the money. Like, There's lots of ways to get a mentor. Point is, don't be opposed to uh, paying or adding value or working for free. Okay. Cause remember nobody owes you anything. Okay. The moment you start acting with entitlement that, Oh man, poor me, nobody wants to help me out, blah, blah, blah. That's the moment that nobody could give a crap about you because you're just a whiner and a complainer. So, um, if you're going to go seek out a mentor, go add value to them some type of way. Um, but the other part of that, what I meant was, you know, if, you know, like obviously you want somebody who's had success in it before, but maybe there's somebody who's got a lot of success in, you know, teaching people how to do it. Some, some people would say that's not good, but I kind of disagree to an extent because I've seen it in sports. You know, there's a lot of great coaches in sports who may not have had a career, you know, maybe they never got to the MLB or they never got to the NBA or whatever, but they are really good at teaching it because, they studied it from front to back and they just, you know, even though they, they weren't athletically or physically talented enough, they understand it and they understand what the best people do because they studied it so good. And you see that a lot. You see a lot of shooting coaches for basketball. You see these quarterback coaches that, you know, they weren't NFL quarterbacks, but they are some of the best coaches there are. So my point is um, maybe the coach or mentor you're looking for themselves didn't do it at a super high level, but they've got a great track record of training other people on how to do it at a high level. And those people, you know, speak highly of that coach. And, uh, so I, I, you know, <laughs> the best of both worlds is they, they have success doing it. They've had success. They're actively having success and they have a track record of, you know, training people like that's the best of all worlds, but a lot of times it doesn't work out that way. So, um, that's, that's my advice on mentors. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you want to learn real estate investing, I feel like I'm your guy. You can apply to be coached by me at futureflipper.com. But uh, that would be the first thing I, I do in my 20s. I'd go get a mentor. Uh, second thing I would do, I would be, I wish in my 20s, 
I was more open-minded and less skeptical. And I'll tell you, I, I'm a skeptical person by nature. You know, anytime I see somebody with a plan or an idea, my first initial thing is not to like support it or be like, yeah, you go get it. My first initial thought is like, okay, like what are they about to do wrong? Like where are the flaw? Where's the flaw in their plan? Like I'm instantly already looking for ways to criticize it and right or wrong. I'm just being honest with you guys. That's like how my brain thinks. And even for my own ideas and plans, I think that way too. I'm like, man, okay, where, where, what am I missing? What's wrong with this plan? How could it blow up, go wrong? You know, is it just pie in the sky thinking or is it legit? And it's led me pretty far, but there are many things that I was skeptical on, thought would never would work, and I was wrong. And it took me years down the road to realize that I was wrong. And then, you know, eventually I, I changed and went all in on it, but I just wish I had more of an open mind on different ideas and things because a lot of times I find myself being closed-minded even to this day. And, you know, like I said, there a, a few of those would have been uh, wholesaling real estate, thought it was a scam, was closed-minded, took me five, six years after I got into real estate to realize, no, this is actually legit and to go after it. Same thing with YouTube, didn't want to do YouTube, thought it was stupid, was just closed-minded, didn't even look into it. Um, you know, this whole e-commerce automation thing, uh, once again, I was closed minded, didn't do it. Um, now I own a company, Lunar Ecom, and there are a bunch of other examples, but point is, I just want you guys to know, uh, being skeptical and, you know, having like a filter is, is, you know, it's good. You don't want to be gullible and just believe everything everyone tells you. But at the same time, you don't want to be so just dead set in your skepticism, even though you don't have all the information and then just like never even pursue the truth and the information. Um, So I hope that makes sense. Like, don't be gullible, but don't just be like dead set thinking no open mindedness. Like you want to still be open minded and say, all right, you know what? I don't really believe you, but I'm going to look into it more. You know, and I'm going to see if like the information is really true or, you know, hey, prove it to me. If, if it's legit, prove it to me. I'm not just going to dismiss it and not look into it any further. Like, no, prove it to me. Like, I'll, I'll have an open mind. I'll listen. And that's kind of how I try to approach everything now is I want to have an open mind, even if I don't believe it initially. So that would be um, something I wish I changed in my 20s. Have you ever wanted to invest in real estate, but you didn't have the time to find deals yourself? That's where Fundrise comes in. Fundrise is a crowdfunding platform that has transacted over $5 billion in real estate and has over 150,000 active investors. While many funds, like my own, require accredited investors, Fundrise allows anyone to invest with as little as $500. If you'd like to learn more, check out Fundrise.com. Once again, that's Fundrise.com. We all know that I love creating passive income through rental properties, but did you know that you can create passive income through owning an e-commerce store? My company, Lunar Ecom, can build and manage a store for you on Amazon or Walmart. We'll handle everything from starting the store, picking the products, and all the day-to-day operations. It's completely passive for you. If you'd like to learn how store owners are making thousands a month in passive income, head over and watch the case study at LunarEcom.com. It will explain everything you need to know about the industry and why I'm so excited about it. So to see the case study, head over to LunarEcom.com. The third thing, you know, I wish I would have read more books, listened to more podcasts on real estate business and entrepreneurship. You know, I really did not read any books in my 20s, um, at least my early and mid 20s. Late 20s, I started to read a little bit. But... uh, I wish I would have read books because books have changed my life. You know, um, last year in 2020, I read, uh, 52 books, a book a week, and it influenced me in a big way that has allowed me to get to where I'm at today. And, um, now I just always read books, any recommendation. I I buy them on Kindle and I read, um, for those of you wondering, I like to actually read. Um, I don't really like audible that much. I retain the information, uh, reading it much better. But uh, same thing with podcasts, you know. I wish I would have found more podcasts like this in my 20s and actually listened. 
you know, Bigger Pockets was like really the first podcast I ever listened to. And that was like at 25. And it completely changed my life. You know, listening to Bigger Pockets while I was flipping couches changed my life. And I just didn't even listen to any other podcast um, before that or really after that. It was like once I learned what I needed to learn, I was like, all right, that was cool. All right, I'm just going to, I don't need podcasts anymore. And now I always try and listen to a podcast when, you know, I'm outside in my backyard shooting basketball or shooting hoops, whatever. Um, I really try to listen to at least one podcast a week just to um, hear some other perspectives and different ideas. So uh, I would definitely say if you're in your 20s, take books, take podcasts seriously. So that would be uh, number three. Number four, I wish in my 20s I would have done more networking. Uh, in my 20s, especially early and mid-20s, I was very shy. I was very reserved. Um, wanted to do everything on my own and didn't feel like I needed really anybody else. And that was the wrong way of thinking. I should have for sure started networking way sooner, getting around other people that... Um, we're doing big things. If I would have did that, you know, things would have been way different. Um, you know, all my friends and people, they weren't really doing much in my early mid twenties, even my late twenties. Like they were just whatever, man, going to college, trying to get out of student debt, you know, dealing with that struggle. And it's like, dude, those aren't the people you really want to be around if you're trying to level up. It's nothing wrong with them. Doesn't make them bad people, but they're not going to really inspire you or teach you new skills for your business or, you know, getting ahead in life. Like I said, getting a mentor who's already done what you're trying to do will definitely help you. But also getting around other people, they don't necessarily have to be mentors. They can be peers who are all just trying to, you know, level up and take, you know, do different things. And, you know, that's one of the things I love about um, our community at Future Flipper. You know, we just actually had our mastermind last week and we had over a hundred people attend it, um, from across the country. And it's like all those people are all, you know, paying a lot of money to be in this mastermind and, um, just, just being around each other, doing deals and like-mindedness. And, you know, it, it really motivates you to take it to the next level. Um, I'm actually flying out tonight to Florida, uh, for a mastermind I'm in, uh, called collective genius. I paid 25 grand a year to be a part of it. Um, literally just so I could get around other high level investors and network with them, share ideas, be inspired. Um, it's cool. So you don't need to spend all this money to network. You know, I didn't have that kind of money to spend in my twenties, but you definitely want to get around people that are trying to level up and, um, whatever it is you're trying to do. So do not be afraid to network. Uh, social media makes it a lot easier now. Um, you know, to find these people who are also trying to level up like you, um, before when I was doing it in my early twenties, it's just like, I didn't even know where to begin. Yeah. All I had back then was Facebook, but, uh, it wasn't like apparent that there was this community of people all trying to, you know, get better at real estate investing or get better at whatever it is you do. So, um, I would say definitely network, uh, reason or thing number five, that I wish I would have done in my 20s was document the journey. So I was just talking about social media and I wish I would have documented everything I went through in my 20s um, and have that like on YouTube and Instagram and all these things. I wish I would have did that. It would be really cool for me to look back now today and say, man, I remember what it was like when I was flipping all those couches. Like, look at that video, you know, look at the video of me doing my first flip. And, and just all these things I messed up on. So cool. Um, but, you know, I don't have a lot of footage of that because I wasn't taking it seriously. I didn't really want to do social media. Once again, kind of like goes hand in hand with the networking. Uh, I wanted to be private, didn't want to talk. Like, I just was like, eh, I'm doing my own thing. I don't want to share the journey. I'm, you know, I don't want to seem like I'm bragging or honestly, when I was flipping couches, I was embarrassed by it, um, to be quite frank. But now it's become this whole thing where <laughs> everybody loves it and it's cool now. So it's uh, <laughs> it's interesting how things change. But yeah, I wish I would have documented the journey. And uh, a lot of people ask me that they're like, well, 
what if I'm just new? I'm not an expert. Why would anyone listen to me? I'd be like, dude, you need to document it because there are more people like you than there are people like me. People can relate to you trying to do your first house flip or, you know, the hustle of figuring things out. They can relate to that. Um, it's much harder to relate to me at this point with all the things I've got going on. Uh, people can be inspired by what I'm doing and say, man, Ryan knows the stuff. He's, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. That's cool. Like, but for you, if you're just starting out, you're going to really inspire people because what you're trying to do is very attainable to them. So keep that in mind. You're never, you don't have to be an expert. Just to share the journey. Reason, let's go into reason six. Um, reason number six, I kind of touched on. But uh, I'll say it again. It was just something I thought about as I was outlining this video uh, or this podcast. But uh, I wish I would have learned about wholesaling sooner. You know, I didn't learn about wholesaling until around 2015. And, you know, I got into real estate in 2010. All I knew was being a realtor. Um, I also knew you could flip houses. I mean, people were doing it in 2010. And I just figured, out, oh, well, you need a lot of money to do it. And uh, there's no other way around it. And I just remember back then, 2010, 11, 12, people would call me as a realtor and they say, hey, do you got any pre-foreclosures? I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, they're like, yeah, they're off-market deals. I'm like, how would you even get an off-market deal? People telling me about it, people giving me hints, but I never looked into it. Um, I remember people telling me about wholesaling and the concept. And I was just like, that's illegal. I don't, there's no way you could do that. Um, <laughs> obviously, in hindsight, I was just being dumb kind of goes hand in hand with what I said about having an open mind. And, you know, if I would have networked or had mentors, I would have realized I could do this. Or if I would have listened to more podcasts or books, like I could have learned wholesaling way earlier, even though I had no money and I could have gotten deals for sure. Especially at that time, there was like no competition with wholesaling. I could have crushed it, but I just did not, you know, I was skeptical and I just didn't do it. And so I just wish that was one of the things I did better early twenties, mid twenties. Like just if I, if I would have taken wholesaling seriously, it would have been pretty crazy. So another one, let's go on to number seven. Um, this is a big one. I've talked about this concept a few times on uh, YouTube, but it goes with that, or I think it's worth mentioning again. Um, I wish I would have stopped being a saver and decided to be an earner sooner. So there are many people, I, I call them like the, the Dave Ramsey followers that are just really big on saving. All they want to do is budget and pinch pennies and save their way into financial freedom. And I think that's dumb. <laughs> I think if you have this savers mentality, you are never going to get rich quick. Um, and getting rich quick is, let me just say like, you know, get rich quick has a bad connotation, but what I am saying is you're not going to get wealthy fast. Uh, if all you're trying to do is save and you're never really thinking about increasing your earning power. Um, and that's how I was. I'm like, well, okay, I make 1200 bucks a month as a baseball player. I got to save, I got a budget. Um, you know, and as I started doing other things, I'm like, well, you know, I'm making a little bit more money, but still got to save, got to, got to budget. And there's nothing wrong with saving and budgeting. But if that is your primary focus of like, I'm only going to save, I'm only going to budget, uh, it takes away your kind of creativity and your mental ability to go out there and say, you know what? I'm just going to go earn way more. So I don't have to go and save and budget and like, you know, decide, do I want to drink this coffee today? Get this Starbucks? Like, no. Say, I am going to drink the Starbucks because I want to. And I'm just going to figure out how to go make five more dollars. You know, I'm going to go figure out how to make a hundred more dollars every single day, which is not hard at all, guys. Okay. If you're listening to this and you're worried about a $5 coffee, you're probably in the saver's mindset and you need to think about how can I go make a hundred dollars extra every day so that I don't have to worry about spending $5. I can live the lifestyle I want to live. And uh, it took me a long time to learn this concept. I started to learn it in my late 20s. Um, now, it's literally all I live by. And I'll tell you, even with 
my dream home that I'm building, you know, if, if any of you guys have watched my main channel for my YouTube, you've seen um, the videos I've been doing on my dream home. If you haven't, go, go watch them after this. Uh, <laughs> you know, the budget, uh, you know, you got to set a budget, right? Like of anything you do, right? You know, the budget originally was $3 million. I'm like, all right, I'm going to spend $3 million building this thing. And now the estimates are currently like $5 million. And for most people, they'd say, well, the budget's $3 million. We're going to have to cut out stuff on the house. And, you know, that is what it is. We're going to have to sacrifice on some things. And I'm like, no, I'm going to get exactly what I want. If $5 million is what it costs, or maybe it's even six. you know, we'll see. But if that's what it costs to get exactly what I want, instead of saying, well, I got to cut things out and blah, 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 I'm going to say, you know what? How am I going to earn that? What do I need to do? to make this attainable for me. You know, do I need to flip more houses? Do I need to start a new business? Do I need to invest differently? Do I need to, you know, amp up my businesses some type of way? Like, what do I got to do? Those are the questions you got to ask yourself um, when you start becoming an earner instead of a saver. Savers say, what do I got to cut out in my life? Earners say, what do I need to do differently to attain what it is I want to attain? It's just a mindset shift, okay? And, you know, I'm not here saying I just go and spend all this money. No, I mean, I just, I live, I for me, I just say, this is the lifestyle I want to live. I want to go on vacation. I want to live in this type of house. I want this type of car. I want to give this amount of money. How do I, ha- how do I have all that? You know, what do I got to do to do all of that? Not cut any of them out or sacrifice any of them. Like, there's a way to do it all. I just got to find the way. And that's how an earner thinks. And, you know, like I said, uh, the savers, they think that their income is capped and it's fixed and they can't change. And so in order for them to, you know, have more money, they have to save and cut things out. Whereas the earner says, my income is not capped. You know, my expenses are this. How do I make more? So I would encourage you guys, if you're in your 20s, start thinking about how do I become an earner? Don't, don't think about how do I just save? I would think about how to make more. So, um, you know, those are the things that I just came up with off the top of my head for what I wish I would have done different in my twenties. Um, it can apply to anything you do in your life. doesn't matter if it's your twenties or thirties or forties, like any stage of life. I think these are all good principles that, um, we can all do better at. And, um, I really focus on these things now going into my thirties and, uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to learn about things that, um, I can do better and, uh, you know, I guess be more efficient at and, um, you know, it helped me live a better life and impact more people. So if, uh, you enjoyed this video, you know, you're on YouTube, give me a, hit that like button, give me a little thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, if you're on Apple, make sure you're subscribed and you leave a five star review and, uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching the Ryan Pineda show. If you want to work with me, head over to ryanpineda.com. You can find my courses, coaching programs, and upcoming events. We also have free resources you can download, so head over to ryanpineda.com.